everyone, and welcome back to Thoughts on the Cosmos. When we last left off, we were exploring the structure of spiral galaxies by taking a look at the pieces and parts that make them up, like the central bulge, the main disk where most of the stars are located, and the mysterious and encompassing galactic halo. One of the first things you notice when looking at images of spiral galaxies taken by the Hubble or Spitzer space telescopes are the massive spirals themselves that come in a variety of different twisting shapes and sizes. The bright glowing arms of spiral galaxies represent regions of space dense with gas and dust clouds, some as big as 300 light years in diameter. That's about a stretch of 20 million times the distance from Earth to the sun. So you could imagine them as big, big clouds of gas and dust in outer space. Now these clouds are significant. These clouds are comprised of the material. They're made up of material that would, given enough time and a little bit of physics, form stars, planetary systems, moons, and given perhaps even more time, living organisms like you and me, human beings, and all the plants and animals of planet Earth. Spiral arms of a galaxy represent the beginning of life of much of the solar system that we see today. Somewhere, somehow, it all began in a spiral arm. Curiously enough, you wonder why there are spiral arms in the first place, if not for the nerdier half of the human race to use images of the Andromeda galaxy as space porn. Hot damn, look at those curves. More than half of all the galaxies in the universe are spiral galaxies. And trust me, there are a lot of galaxies out there, billions and billions of them. So if there is a grand designer to the universe, he, she or it must really have a thing for spirals. The spiral structure of the Milky Way that we all know and love exists because of two main forces. The rotation of stuff, stars and gas clouds around the center of the galaxy, and something in physics called standing waves. Now don't panic. Think of it in our case as a spiraling shockwave, also traveling around the center of the galaxy. Like shockwave from Transformers, except more spiral shaped and not a Decepticon or made of metal. I kid, bad joke. The spiral arms that are largely shaped and carried by the shockwave travel at a much slower speed than the rotating matter. As the matter catches up to the spiral arms, they are caught between the spiral arm shockwave and even more matter crashing in behind it. Think of it as a traffic pileup where much faster cars are crammed in behind a much slower moving truck. The spiral shockwave represents the slower moving truck or lorry if you're from the United Kingdom. And all that matter represents the traffic of cars coming in from behind. It's this cramming and squeezing and compression of matter trailing the spiral arm shockwave that causes the giant gas clouds mentioned earlier to heat up because of the pressure and collapse to form stars. This process I will go through in depth in a later video, or you guys could watch a younger version of me give it a go in my Project Solaris video. Say hi to past me guys, that's me from about 2011 if I'm not mistaken. Big stars that form 20 times the mass of our sun shine bright and live fast but die young like a swole up bodybuilder that overdoses on way too much juice. Rest in peace Ziz. rest in peace. So they end up exploding while still inside the spiral, producing blast waves that maintain the spiral shockwave, and also seeding the galaxy with the building blocks of life, like the carbon in our apple pies, the calcium in our teeth, and the iron in our blood. Matter that makes up smaller stars, like our sun, live long enough to escape the spiral arms and continue their journey as wanderers across the galaxy carrying with them the possibility of new planetary systems and intelligent life, carrying with them a new light among the stars. This is why I love astronomy so much, because it all comes back to us somehow. The more you look up, the more you find your own self. It hits us very slowly at first, and then all at once to know that the life of the sun began in a spiral arm, and therefore the life of the planet Earth and all of its inhabitants, you and me, are also related. You start to appreciate more not just the pictures of the galaxies taken by the telescopes orbiting high above us, but also your own life as part of the wider cosmos. 
curious about cosmology, my channel wants to fill you in. Not in the porno way. My name is Son of Terra 92 and this is my series called Thoughts on the Cosmos. If you've ever wanted to learn more about space and the universe that we live in, like, comment and subscribe to keep the channel going and I will see you next time.